Hey, what up team? It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q. We back at it again. Another good day, another good cook. Today we're gonna slip back over to the pellet grill and be firing up the uh, Green Mountain Grill. We're gonna be doing a nice, savory rotisserie chicken. I know you're gonna like this one. Uh, we're gonna throw some good aromatics in there. I think you're gonna like that. And I got a special surprise for you. Right there. I want to take a quick second to give a special thanks to Megan and Colleen. I love y'all for putting together my initial inaugural Killer Miller first tee. Mm. We're gonna have these babies together for y'all soon enough for about mm, $59.95. I'm joking with y'all for something like that, but I really appreciate y'all taking the time getting me together. Everything has been growing like crazy. It's been a beautiful experience, and let me tell you, we're gonna keep this thing going. I got a whole lot more coming for you. A lot of good things in store. But with that said, let's do the work, shall we? Okay, so I got my five pound bird here. It's already been cleaned up. I already patted it dry. And the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of olive oil on here. And we're just gonna kinda rub it all the way around. It's gonna help us uh, protect that skin a little bit. And also give me a little something for this rub to stick. Get it all everywhere. We will not neglect the inside of this thing either. I'm gonna get some of that in there too. So we're gonna be doing that rotisserie. So at the end of the day, this baby is gonna be basting itself. So I don't wanna leave any part of this bird out. So we also gonna start off, now that I got the olive oil on here, before I get to the seasonings, I'm gonna be prepping some things for the inside of this bird. Needless to say, like I said, things already clinked out, make sure you get them giblets and niblets and all that good stuff out the middle. We don't want nothing nasty going on up in here. All right, so we got that pretty. So over here, I got two garlic cloves that I cut in half, and I went ahead and crushed them a little bit just to kind of get everything activated. We're going right inside, put about half of that, right in the neck. I'm gonna come back right over the top with a piece of that onion. Just kind of plug it with another one on the back, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rest of my garlic in along with the rest of this. I had a pretty much a half of a white onion, and what I did was I put it in quarters, right? So the first part, I'm gonna stick right there in the neck. The rest of it, we're going directly in the cavity with it. All right, the next thing that we're gonna be adding in is we're gonna throw some aromatics in there. So I bought some oregano, some rosemary, um, and some thyme. I won't be using it all because we're gonna be doing something special later on with this mop as we kind of keep this thing moist and baste it. But I want to open these up and I'll take a good quarter to half of it. And then we're just going to be putting that directly right in. And we're just going to be stuffing this all the way on the inside. So there's the time. When I'm doing this, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But quickly, I want to make sure that I still keep the longest and the best looking pieces for later on. We we'll be putting together a special little mop. I want to make sure that I got the best pieces for that mop. All those littler pieces and stuff like that, those are ones I can easily stuff on in the body. Okay, and then we got some rosemary. Love the rosemary. When we get this thing going, the smells that's going to be coming out of here are going to be absolutely special. Ah, I don't want to lose it. Come on over here. This rosemary's big. All right. We're gonna put a little rosemary in the body. Okay, now that I got my aromatics there, stuffed in there nice and deep, and I'll take the rest of these onions that's pushing out the top, and I kind of close them up with it. So we got garlic, we got white onion, we got rosemary, we got thyme, and we got oregano. All right, so now we got that oil on there. We got our aromatics on the inside, along with that little bit of oil. The next thing that I wanna go ahead and do Let's get this baby seasoned up. I'm over here sweating. It's hot out here. You're going to be hearing me say that from now on. In Arizona, this is the good weather. We're about to get to the real heat. I'm going to be using an AP rub. So really, there's nothing uh, keeping it pretty basic. Where my old sweat rag go? Some uh, salt, pepper, and garlic. 
nothing too crazy. The one that I'm using today is actually from Elk Creek. I actually got this out of one of my barbecue boxes a long time ago, but uh, it's pretty good. I don't want to do nothing too crazy. I want to keep this pretty steady, steady, freddy, and basic. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this baby over without losing all my ingredients out the outside or the inside. And let's hit some on the back. And we're just looking for a nice, solid, even coat. A little bit on the front. Make sure we cover everybody. Open them legs up. Okay, turn it on the side. Let's get the body, armpits. Get that leg. And notice I kind of get my hands on here coated. That way I can already just kind of catch what's going to fall and instantly touch it right back up on there. Boom. And another armpit. I want some in the booty. From the rooter to the tutor, right? We're going to have flavor. And then let's make sure we get our whole top along with dropping some off in there. Nothing too crazy. Now, the next thing that we're going to be doing is tressing this bird. And I'm no restaurant connoisseur or nothing like that, so this won't be the perfect one. But at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're going to be tying this bird up to make it a little bit easier to make sure that it's going to stay um, on the actual rotisserie and it doesn't fall off on us. And then also, you don't want it all wide open and the arms flapping and everything, because at the end of the day, it's going to cook the way it looks, right? So I want this thing to be nice and tight, nice and pretty. The other thing that happens is when we actually truss it and we bring those uh, wings in and everything and it's nice and tight, it makes it like a ball. It actually helps it to cook more evenly as it's going, so everything will get done at about the same time. Your legs, your thighs, the breast, all will get done at the same time instead of breast being all dried out and waiting on the legs or vice versa or something like that. All right, there's a peek at it. Not the perfect one, but uh, it'll get us there. So basically all we're gonna be using is this kitchen twine. Pull off more than you need. We're going and we tied up these legs right here, right? We went all the way around the backside to kind of give us some support. Came up and through. And then like I was saying, we wanna make sure that we have something to hold these wings in. So we went and tucked them back under the uh, rope right there. So, probably not perfect, but at the end of the day, it should hold serve. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, let this thing hang out for a second. I'm about to bring this uh, pellet grill up to temp. We're going to be cooking at 300 today, and then we're going to throw this thing on the skewer and get it going. Okay, so now we're getting it ready to put it on the skewer. This comes in two pieces. You screw it together. Now, this is something I know from doing it before. You need to end up with your meat more or less in the middle. So, I'm pretty much going to look to center this right over it where it's split in half, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and feed it straight through the back. And we wanna come out the neck. Let's we'll see if I don't end up losing all my ingredients. Perfect. And then like I said, about the middle is about where I'm gonna stop it at, okay? So you got a couple more things. We got two clamps, right? Sharp and pokey. You're gonna get one on each side. They're gonna be digging into it to actually hold it in place. We also have a counterweight. And then we kind of have this bracket. And I didn't used to know what this was until I started having problems. Then I figured out what it is. This bracket actually holds it in place at the other end of the smoker. And I'll show you when we get over there. But it's allowing it so it doesn't move back and forth. So it doesn't fall out of the actual rotisserie motor. And then it can actually keep spinning. So this is important along with this counterweight. Once you keep this up, you notice one side's a little bit heavier. The counterweight is going to go opposite. And it's going to help the motor not have to work so hard as it's turning this baby on and over. So we're going to start here. We're going to go with one of ours. I'm going to put it right on one side. Go ahead and lay back on your back. There we go. I don't want to lose my onion. Throw that right back in there. And then what you want is something to be more or less towards the bottom. And something to get in there towards the body. Push it in nice and far, okay? When you um, think about it, once we start cooking, this meat is going to shrink. So you don't want to have it on there loose. Get it in there tight, and we want to hold it where it's at. Same thing. I'm coming from the other side now. Loosen up my little bracket. And I'm going to try not to 
overly stab my breast so it can actually look somewhat pretty in the end. We'll see. There we go. And then nice and far, put them both together. And then we want to tighten up these clamps. As tight as you can get it. Do one, push from the other side, hold it, and then tighten up the other. Tight as you can get it. We want to make sure this don't go nowhere. Boom, we're on there. Just like that, okay? Now, breast side is the heavy side. Uh oh, there go onion. We'll stuff it back in there. Breast side is the heavy side. So, and we're gonna dust this thing again to make it pretty at the end. With my counterweight, and I'll show you again over there at the smoker, just kind of go over it until you can actually see where it's at. I'm gonna stretch it out so it's sitting nice and long. It's gonna go on this side, and I got it up, right? Heavy sides down, counterweight's gonna be up. And I'll get that somewhat close to the bird. Wait, just slipping. Bang. And bang. All right. We all set. Next thing we got to do is get on over there to that pit. Let's go. Who say that old green mountain don't smoke, man? I love this thing. All right, let's talk about this. We got a couple more pieces that we need to put together. This is the motor. You got two brackets. And I showed you this already. That's that clamp to tighten up. Here's a little pro tip for a trick for you too. Get you like a little bowl, you can sit it in there, makes it super easy. Also, when you're getting that last seasoning in, you can season it and kind of rotate it right on the skewer. Makes life easy. So there's that, sitting tight. So let's get this put together. You got these two pieces. Now this is how you set this baby up. This little latch is gonna slide over and it's going right there. The one that's longer, right? See how much further that stick out compared to this one? This is the one that goes on the outside. It's the one that's going to have a unit attached. So it's going to be there. This one. And you see the little U. That's what the skewer is going to sit in. I took my racks out because I'm not going to need it. And to keep everything nice and clean, I put a pan down there so that'll catch my drippings. And I can just toss that out the way and then everything still be clean in my smoker. This one on the inside, you see there's a slit right there. This one's going to go right there. I slipped that one in now. And it'll go right there and it'll be coming all the way from out that hole i'm gonna set this baby all up and i'll show you turn this baby on and we'll get the magic going all right so we got that all on a couple things that i want to tell you because i remember i took forever and couldn't figure it out this is how this goes on it literally just slips right onto that little uh compartment right make sure when you're putting your skewer in first things first push it all the way over so that it goes in and you'll feel it fall into the groove almost like a screwdriver or something like that it's it's made to go into a something that's rectangle so if it's not actually locking in it's not in the right spot after you've pushed it all the way in so i put this side in first right and i could have came over a little bit more got a little rock but i'm okay um push that side in first i came over the top and then went here we got our counterweight opposite of the heaviness so that for the most part helps it with stopping a lot of that work and then from there this one nice and tight and notice that it's snug all the way at the end the big thing that that one's doing is it's allowing that to not end up falling out of the groove right over here so it's actually keeping it in the spot and then like i said i added the pan at the bottom a couple of my onions already fell out no problem that's going to add to my little aromatics I'm gonna add a little bit of moisture in there so I might splash a little water in there. But other than that, we're gonna let this baby roll and I'll catch you back in about an hour. All right, team. We've been smoking along for about a little over an hour. I just hit this with a little bit of olive oil. One thing I wanna bring you in on so that you can see is um, some say you don't make a mistake that I did. You see I'm getting a little bit of lag right there. And mainly because um, because I was trying to make sure I kept it pretty, I didn't stab into the actual backbone of it and getting those prongs in. So it's making a little bit of space where it's actually uh, missing to actually catch and everything. It's not gonna kill anything, so I'm not too, too worried about it. But uh, just something where you can keep it where it's not working too, too hard. But uh, nothing to do really. This thing's taking care of itself. That's one thing that's nice about the old pellet grill. We're gonna keep it rocking. And then here we'll come back when it's about two hours in and we'll start doing something special. Hey, I wanna take a quick second to tell you if you're new, 
Thanks for following along with me. I appreciate you. Take a quick second, hit that bottom right corner. Make sure that you like and subscribe. And for all my old heads, I appreciate y'all sticking with me. Like I keep telling you, we've been growing fast. We got a lot of good support going on. And I love hearing them comments. Tell me more about what you're looking for. Tell me more about problems you have and let me get something to do. Uh, with that said, let's get back to the work. All right, team. I told you we'd be back with something fun. So I told you we was only going to use about half of those herbs. We had that rosemary, the thyme, the oregano. We made us a little mop and we went ahead and took us about a stick of butter. That one's actually salted butter because I wasn't too worried. There's not too much uh, salt on there right now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start our basting. Like I said, it's been about two hours, 25 minutes. One thing you love and I almost feel like I'm cheating out here today. Might be kind of hard to get that to zero in, but we floating along nice and easy at 300 over here on this uh, Daniel Boone Prime. Love me the Green Mountain. Uh, rotisserie's been rolling pretty well. I definitely want to try to dial it in a little bit tighter next time as far as uh, I got like a little bit of a, a shot lags fall. But um, other than that, it's looking pretty good. Let's take a peek. So what we're going to do now, and I'm going to go ahead and put this right on in here. That way I don't get my whole grill all dirty. Is just baste this baby with butter and start to get these herbs on there. Be careful when you're basting it that you don't, uh, even though, uh, like I said, it's been a while, but you don't want to mess around and pull off your rub. I just want to get a nice sheen on it. It's looking good. You can see it fall over a little bit right there. Not too, too bad, but I want to get that worked out. So we're going we're gonna to fix that one. I'm going to be researching that tonight. That's how, that's how I am with it. Give me something to do. And uh, next time we do this one, we're going to make it where it don't do that for us. And that's it. I'll bring you back here in another half hour. We hit them again. All right. We about half hour later. So we roughly at about three hours. It's at 300. It's time to hit it with another bath. I paused it on the rotisserie. So one, we can get a good look at it. Looking pretty good. It smells amazing, I tell you that. But also, and I'm gonna let this sit in here and make sure that I can loosen up a little bit. I wanna get a reading. I'm thinking it's probably gonna end up taking me about roughly um, four hours on this bird. But let me get a check. Ooh, a lot closer than I thought. 162, 161 in the breast. See what juice comes out of there. Pretty clear, pretty clear. All right, let's go check out this thigh. I hit the bone a little bit. Not quite. 157. That's got a little ways to go. All right. So this is what we gonna do. We got our mop down here, so let's review our cook. 300 is what we've been cooking at. This bird's roughly about a little over five pounds. We've been going along. I'm using uh, the Traeger blend pellets. I think it's like a blend of hickory, cherry, and uh, one other wood. I'm not sure which the other one. And uh, from here, we're just gonna let this baby keep on going. I'll base it again in another 30 minutes. All right, this should be about a wrap. It has been literally about four hours and 20 minutes. Now keep in mind, I did have to take it out for a second because I was flopping around in there a little bit. So uh, like I said, I missed the, the skewer on the back so it wasn't poking all the way through. So I lost some time there. That's probably where that extra 20 minutes came in because I was expecting about 40 minutes. Or I mean, uh, four hours. That looks good. That's just about at 165. That's gonna carry over. And I've already poked it in a couple other spots. So we about to get this baby up off of there. I just want to give you a peek of when we come off. I'm gonna give it one more base then while we at it. Now this is that mop that we made with the uh, the extra oregano, thyme, and rosemary. And that's just good old fashioned butter. We're gonna let this, we'll pull this off of here, get it off this skewer, let it hang out for about 10 minutes, we'll get a taste and we'll call it. Four hours, 25 minutes later. And that's what we're looking at. 
She came out pretty. She came out pretty. I'll give you a nice little cameo. Let you check it out. But uh, I can tell you now, just from everything that's coming off the board and a little bit I tasted on the fingers, flavor is already ready. Also, you see the cutting board. A little something something. We coming along. And I'm going to go ahead just to make everything nice and fun. We're going to give it one last basting of this uh, mop with this oregano, thyme, and rosemary. Give it a little drizzle, drizzle. This ain't nothing but flavor right here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this thing cut and give it a taste. Hold tight. All right, so we're going to dive in here and trim this baby. I'm going to cut back this leg a little bit. And I want to try some of the breast since normally that's the the meat that comes out the driest. We're going to get this little bit right here on the end. Nice and pretty. I see a little bit of smoke ring in there. And definitely I see some moisture. I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to flip this around so you can check it out. Oh, tell you. Oh, yeah. All right, I had to bring you back and finish this thing out the right way. I want you to check this out. I know I got bad lighting. I'm out here and I don't got no light, but uh, super moist and juicy. I literally had to clean up a little bit before I could actually get to taste it. That rotisserie game, I don't do that enough. I'm going to tell you something. Flavor for days. Flavor for days. That's all I can say. Moist juicy nice little hint of smoke in there and them aromatics adding that um, onion garlic and the uh, rosemary thyme and all that good stuff on the inside you can taste that flavor all the way throughout we're gonna do this again in another week killer miller q peace